Hello friends and we're off on a relaxing ride, this time on Hurricane, the grey Royal Enfield Hunter and we're taking the A684 from Sedbert to Halls. Not going quite into Halls, we're going to turn off before then, but I hope you enjoy this run, it's on the road that we did in the opposite direction a while ago and we're running in the Hurricane because it's only done at this stage, it's only done uh, just about uh, 80 miles, so there'll be a few stops on the way. And it's a lovely sunny day. Now, I did a ride on Spitfire a few days ago that was also into the Yorkshire Dales, but it went up over some high moorland. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't performing properly. I made a mistake and for some reason I had a red filter switched on which ruined the whole thing. So uh, fortunately today we're okay and we've also got a wind muff fitted around the camera and that means that the wind noise is uh, much more controlled than it would be otherwise. But it's a very windy day. At this point I realised I Mirror and I saw that uh, the mother suckers up behind me, some little way off, and uh, he kept his distance back from me, didn't try to overtake, which uh, I was quite surprised about. This is a lovely road and it uh, is very little to use, it's also in lovely condition, and that's the thing that I noticed about the high moorland road incredibly bumpy and I did on that ride 100 miles all, all told almost and when I got back my arms and wrists really ached badly and I wasn't sure if that was caused by the road surface or the wind which is also very strong that day. I had thoughts about maybe refitting that uh, windshield to windscreen to the Hunter, the one that I had on the Meteor which I'd removed when I sold the meteor. So when I actually looked at the possibility of fitting that uh, that touring windscreen, I realised it wouldn't fit because the Hunter has a different arrangement for the upper leg by the headlamp. There's a, a welded portion on the left hand upper fork leg, which means you can't put a, the metal strap around it there so that was a waste of time then and actually I never really got on terribly well with that uh, touring windscreen it, I found it caused a lot of buffeting behind and didn't really improve matters now on this ride it was very windy and I didn't suffer any fatigue I did uh, about the same sort of mileage well, that's about 90, 95 I suppose all told on this ride and uh, didn't suffer any fatigue at all no problems with neck and uh, shoulders and certainly not the ache that after about 60 miles on the meter I used to find this uh, ache across here quite a bad ache across my shoulder blades and uh, in my chest and I think that's where it must be because the riding position which didn't really suit me I know a lot of other people haven't suffered from this at all I know how uncle rides over in uh, says eastern Spain he doesn't, uh, doesn't complain about this at all so it's obviously me but there we go, it's uh, horses for courses, I suppose. And this is, we're on the open uh, open land now, and we've got the Halgills over on the left hand side, which we've saw in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to pull in over on the left hand side. That mother is still behind me, still keeping his distance. I'm going to pull in on the left hand side. And uh, he will actually ride past me, but he went up a bit turned around and came back and we had a lovely little chat his name's Roger this is where I'm going to pull in here there we are that's how Gill's over on left and that uh, dreadful car park and there he goes on his way past and uh, yes his name's Roger he lives in uh, in Kendall and that was a 250 Honda trail bike that he has and he was interested in uh, I think he must have realised it was a hunter when he because 
he is looking a possibility of getting one himself. So we had a lovely long chat about the features that the hunter has. And I let him have a sit on and he was uh, really very impressed with it. So who knows, it might be another happy Royal Enfield hunter rider. I certainly am. Just coming out of the open section now over the cattle grid, very bumpy, as you saw. And uh, yes, we're now heading off down this lovely, lovely road. Now I'm no, um, I'm <laughs> well, I don't like to have my adrenaline pumping. I come out for these rides to relax and to meditate to some extent. Although I don't, <laughs> I don't go to sleep. Um, you'll be pleased to know. So yes, I'm just off. I'm just off for a, a very relaxing ride, and I know quite a few of you join me for that very reason. So I'm sure you're going to find this one relaxing. Oh, I certainly did. And we're heading off now towards uh, the Garsdale Head Viaduct, Garsdale Railway Station. And I also have discovered the another name for that uh, Garsdale Viaduct is uh, Dandy Meyer. Thanks for uh, for that from one of the, our friends on this, uh, this channel. I love to call you friends because you are. When I'm riding with you, it feels like I'm riding with friends. So that's great. So thank you very much for joining me on this one. Now, we haven't got an awful lot of people on this channel, have we? 550, I think it is now. And it goes up and down a little bit. Sometimes I notice it's dropped down a couple. But I'm not actually sure that YouTube Studio really reflects uh, the true nature of this because it does uh, it does seem to vary a bit. Anyway, I love, this is an absolutely beautiful uh, valley. And River Clough, of course, runs uh, alongside, as we know from uh, the previous ride going the other way. And I'll just let you relax and uh, enjoy this in the lovely sunshine. On the return, of course, the wind was behind us. It's uh, an easterly wind, and it's been strong now for a few days. But lovely, I love the dales, uh, very unspoiled, and this road especially. You do get a few motorhomes on this because there's um, a caravan club, what used to be called a caravan club, it's called the Caravan and Motorhome Club now, to reflect uh, the growing interest in motorhome ownership. And that's over in Halls. I have stayed at that. I've just stood up a bit. Um, uh, yeah, I have stayed at that uh, caravan club site in my camper van and uh, it's a very nice site and uh, does take you off into the Dales. We caught the bus there, the Dales, Dales bus, only takes a few. Unfortunately, somebody on that bus had Covid and passed it on to me, so the latter half of my holiday I had Covid, which wasn't very pleasant. It now, thankfully, as much as one can get over COVID, I think there's still residual traces of uh, that nasty lurgy that lingers on afterwards. But yes, that little bus took us into some lovely little villages, and I shall be exploring those villages on this, uh, on either this machine or. Uh, on Spitfire, probably this machine because we've got the panniers fitted to this so I can go it for much longer rides and uh, today I'm carrying a flask of uh, decaffeinated coffee and a cheese roll and very nice it was too when I stopped and had that uh, back at Dent Railway Station I called in at Dent Railway Station on the way back in their waiting room and had, uh, had it there I was going to call in at Calgill unfortunately there was somebody sitting on the bench I earmarked for myself so Anyway, I'll stop my chatter now, you can just enjoy the ride for a bit.
as you can tell there are a few bumps on this and you do have to watch it for those we do shake you up a bit but the majority of this road is is in lovely condition oh, yes a joy to ride and that's the river over on the right hand side there the river clough as we know You've just seen that motorcycle is coming towards us. Uh, you do get a few motorcycles on this road riding to horse, but they all seem to prefer the other route. And that other route is the B6255 from Ingleton over to horse. Now, I don't care for that, although we do return along part of that. We turn, return along the more interesting part. I think the bit from Ingleton over towards the Ribblehead Viaduct, and whilst you do get a view of the Ribblehead Viaduct, um, I don't find the other road, the, that part of the ride at all interesting. It's, it's just straight and up over moorland, which is pleasant enough, but uh, no, it's not for me. So this is my much preferred route. It's, uh, it's slower, it's quieter, and uh, much more picturesque, I think. And a couple of very tight bends here. <laughs> Catch out the unwary. Straight on right across the uh, through the wall, would you? No, I wouldn't anyway. This time of the year in uh, in the UK, it, the weather changes quite dramatically uh, from day to day. Uh, it's early spring, and uh, not only that, but the flora is changing all the time too. It's a time of huge changes, and that makes it so pleasant when you're riding to see those changes. So wouldn't it actually matter if you went every week? on this same ride, it will, it will be different yet again. As you can hear, the, uh, the Hunter is uh, running nicely, even though it's uh, it's still pretty tight, this engine. So it, uh, take, they take about a thousand miles to, uh, to really get loosened up nicely. But towards the end of this ride, it was really a lot different it was when I first started on it and uh, very smooth I think if you uh, if you rev them a bit you do get a bit of a buzz I was reading uh, reading listening to a, a YouTube from the classic motorcycle channel which was recommended to me by my friend in New Zealand and uh, he mentioned about the rear shock absorbers being firm no, I haven't actually. Well, I'm used to uh, girling units which are fitted to British motorcycles, and in my view, these are as good as those. Um, I'm sure there are better ones available that you could fit to this uh, this machine. And uh, I did actually check the tyre pressures, uh, thinking to myself, I wonder if tyre pressures make a difference with uh, the way that these bikes handle. And I checked them, and they were standard at uh, 29. PSI um, and Roger the chap on the, the Honda uh, had a 21 inch front wheel on that and this has got 17 wheels uh, front and rear and uh, I did mention to him about uh, the way that we get into the a bit of 
badly worn road, it tends to follow that uh, rut. And he said it's even worse with a 21 inch wheel. And, uh, it's almost uh, unridable sometimes. So it's not just me then, which I thought it was. I thought I just wasn't used to it. But I think the roads have deteriorated badly since the uh, 1960s, 70s and into the 80s, I think the roads have become much worse because of the heavy traffic on them, of which I've spoken before, I believe, so I can't admit it again anymore. You know what it's like, those of you in the UK. The trees have yet to come into any sort of real relief, haven't they? They're still looking there in their winter garb, their leaves, which is very attractive, but uh, it will be nice to see some leaves appear. And it won't be long now. Off to the right is uh, Garsdale Railway Station. We're going past that today. Heading off to uh, Garsdale Head Viaduct. So as we know, Dandy Meyer. So yes, this is all new territory now. I'm just coming up to the uh, the moor cocking, I think it's called. Or is it wood cocking? I'm not sure. Right, well I've just seen that we've just come into North Yorkshire. We don't know. Now there's a turning up here on the left by this uh, this inn. By the wood co wo mo mo cock woodcock inn. And... Uh, and that takes you up to Kirby Stephen and Pendragon Castle. If you turn off left at Pendragon Castle, that takes you up over 
to with the road leading back down from uh, Kirby Stephen down to Sidborough. So that'll be a ride for another time. As I've done some moorland riding, I uh, didn't want to do any more of it today. And uh, so we're carrying on to Halls, where we're going to turn off before we reach it. And I'm not over fussed about Halls personally. I know it's very popular with a lot of motorcyclists. The bikes and go in the cafes there, but uh, personally, it's not for me. I much prefer the uh, quieter places, and that's why I should be taking a quieter, unclassified road out of Halls another time, which will take me over towards Leyburn. And uh, Roger, that I was speaking to earlier, um, he was actually going heading off over towards Ace Garth and doing quite um much further ride than I am intending to do today and he'd been doing some uh, homework on uh, things to see over there and there's some old mine workings which he's interested in and uh, an old church which he said was going to be very pretty so uh, yeah, very nice man enjoyed his company for a little while that wind kind of, although the muff is uh, controlling it very well. Um, it, without that, it would be un just unbearable. But uh, no, it's not so, not so bad at all. You can actually hear the exhaust and uh, I can chat over it a bit, can't I? So. Not sure this is quite so interesting, this section, as uh, the bit up to Garsdale. But well, it's just opened up a bit now. It's a bit, bit more green. I do look a bit green. over again. It's up quite nice and high. I was thinking on this ride, is there anything I'd actually want to change on the on the Hunter at all? And uh, no, no, there is not. I'm probably happy with it as it is. I've got the sump guard fitted and uh, these bar end mirrors. They've made all the difference.
this really is a lovely landscape. It's, um, in North Yorkshire is uh, it's very varied. Uh, you've got North York moors which I've travelled over. Uh, but this part is uh, absolutely beautiful. is very fortunate to be living up so close to all this because we've only done uh, about 30 miles and here we are in the middle of all of this travelled in from the seaside which is where I live This is uh, coming into the village of Apposet and just after Apposet we turn off to the right and we take that B road which uh, is the B6245 uh, so we avoid going to the centre of halls Um, my subscribers did ask me about the height from the top of the footrest to the top of the seat on the Hunter and for anybody else who's interested it's 20.5 inches which suits me, I'm, uh, I've got a 30 inch leg, inside leg and uh, stand 5 foot 11 inches tall and it's just perfect for me and it means I can stand up on the footrest when I need to not right up but uh, sufficiently to take the pressure off the back end when we over some bumpy ground uh, which we encounter from time to time as you've seen. Now we're going to be coming up to the end of our ride fairly soon so I hope you've enjoyed this ride and will join me on part two which will be the ride from Halls over towards the turn off towards Cowgill and Dent. That will be the second part of the ride and the ride eight from Halls that uh, B road it is quite pleasant it is uh, yeah, heavily used but fortunately this morning it was very quiet so hope to see you again on that ride Here's where we turn off and we'll let the engine cool down as it's still running in. So see you again soon I hope.